Hey Soul Family, welcome back to the channel. This is the White Feather Tarot. And in today's reading, we're doing who wants to reach out and what would they like to say? To do this reading, we will be picking out three piles together. So I see one, two, and I feel this one as three. Let's check out what we have. So for pile number one, we have deer. For pile number two, we have earthworm. And for pile number three, we have scorpion. If you like to pick with crystals, give me a minute or a second to add this in. There we go. So take a look at which one of these three piles or three crystals you're the most drawn to. And that's probably the pile for you here today. If you feel drawn to more than one pile, perhaps there are more messages or perhaps there are more people that would like to reach out to you uh, and they have a different message. So the way I see it is each pile representing a different person with a different message unless of course you're being called to different piles for the same person this is all up to your intuition and as usual you'll find the timestamps down in the description box click on your times and i'll see you in your reading Hey Soul Family, as you know, if you love the card picking process and the shuffling, I left this section specifically for you. And uh, also, as I always mention, if you are interested to know anything about any of the decks that I use, I always list them down in the description box. Okay, so on this side, we have the oracles that we will be using for this reading. And on this side, we have the tarot cards that we will be using. All right, I believe we are now ready for the shuffling process. Let's now shuffle with intention. And let's find out who wants to reach out to the three piles, please. And what would they like to say? Can we kindly know, please? Thank you. So one, two, and three. All right. Moving on to the next Oracle deck. Yeah, that's the right way up. Let's shuffle with intention. Who wants to reach out? And what would they like to say thank you very much? One, two, and three. Okay. Let's pick out our next Oracle deck. Now we have more space. There we go. Who would like to reach out, please, to the three piles? And what would they like to see? Whoa, okay. So we can see the one on the top. So what I'm going to do is flip them, right? How many do we have here? Four. I'm going to go one, two, and three. Right. Thank you very much. <clears throat> now... We're ready for our tarot cards. I'll be using five tarot decks and I'll be taking one card out of each deck for this reading. So let's pick out the first deck. Is that the right way up? Yes, it is. So let's shuffle with intention. Can we kindly know who wants to reach out to the three piles, please? Thank you. And 
and what would they like to say? Wonderful. Let's pick our next deck. <clears throat> Who wants to reach out to the three piles? And what would they like to say, please? Thank you. Moving on to the next deck. Who wants to reach out to the three piles, please? And what would they like to say? Who wants to reach out to the three piles? And what would they like to say, please? Ah, thanks. One, two... I feel uh, three needs both of these, so I'm going to take them. All right. Let's shuffle with intention with our last deck. Who wants to reach out to the three piles? And what would they like to say, please? What would they like to say? Who wants to reach out to the three piles? And what would they like to say? Thank you. One, two, and three. Wonderful. <laughs> We've just finished preparing the, f the three piles for this reading. And let's now tidy them up and put them together. And there we go. So pile number one is ready with the white how light. Oh, I feel I didn't mention the stone names um, in the introduction, but that's okay, I believe. I guess it's meant to be this way. All right, so pile number two is also ready. It's a little bit slippery today. It's one of those days, but it's cool. It's ready. And let's add the beautiful garnet. Oh, there we go. And let's uh, handle pile number three. There we go. Yep, there we go. Pile number three with the Amazonite. Wonderful. I believe we've just prepared, finished preparing the three piles. It was so lovely spending this time with you. Thank you for being around. It is always a pleasure sharing this energetic space with you. As I always say, I'm very grateful for you. I have a lot of love and gratitude for you. Thank you for sticking around and let's get to your reading. Hi, pile number one. So you have chosen the beautiful white how light as well as the deer. So let's take a closer look at who wants to reach out to you, pile number one. And what would they like to say? I feel like with the white howlite and the deer, this seems to be someone with such good intentions. Such loving, good intentions is what I'm already picking up. But let's take a look at the rest of your cards first. You have child uh, orphan. So, independence based on learning to go 
to go it alone. Conquering fear of surviving. Mm. Okay. You also have cord with initiation. Mm. And you have the sun. The sun is also childlike energy as well. So self-express and embody truth. Okay. So some of you, this is a special message for some of you. If you have a certain child that you don't see much, I feel here that this message could be related to them wanting to reach out to you. But nonetheless, let's continue the reading and find out who wants to reach out and what would they like to say. So, you have the Six of Swords. Okay. You have the Sun. Again. Wow. Uh, it's so... It's so clear that this one ha that this person has really good intentions. They're very clear. You have the chariot. You have the five of cups. And <clears throat> you have the knight of swords. I'm inclined to feel, pile number one, that someone who loves you and appreciates you very much will be trying to reach out to you, uh, pile number one. Perhaps they're feeling a little bit of the sting of abandonment. Uh, due to both of you perhaps not speaking to each other. With the cord, I feel like this is someone who's really attached to you. Someone who feels like you mean the world to them with the sun card appearing twice this way. In fact... The message that I'm seeing from this dear card is actually a message of them telling you that you are very dear to them. So <clears throat> with the five of cups, I see that you may have at some point decided to drop them, maybe cut them off. And you see here with the knight of swords, you could have done it swiftly and quickly without um uh, without hinging is that the word without flinging <clears throat> and it really caused some sort of emotional death to them it really hit them hard um it was very hard obviously for them to move on uh without you pile number one the, the it really cut and hurt um their heart they feel i see alone without you here i feel like they want to come and tell you to they want to come and tell you that to take things back slowly to connect slowly but really what they want to say is they really wish they can quickly take things back to where they were. Because with you, with the sun appearing twice, there is so much happiness when they are around you. It cannot even be expressed into words. It's a strong emotion that they have 
that cannot be put into words, the amount of happiness that you bring them um, simply being around in their lives. Pile number one is the strong message that I'm seeing. So like I said, this is someone who is very emotionally attached to you because you mean so much to them. And obviously there could be a strong bond to begin with between the two two of you. But it seems like for some once for some reason or the other, since the reading is about them, I'm not really sure uh why, but you have decided to drop them and cut them off very swiftly. Perhaps they've done something wrong. But I feel like their intentions of what you mean to them and how much they want to reconciliate with you is coming from very good intentions and they want to show you just how much um, dear you are to them. I feel like with the child orphan here, they usually can, they are usually independent, they're usually strong, but when it comes to you, they feel alone when you're not there. They feel like something vital in their lives is missing and that it doesn't feel maybe homey or stable or home. Yes, home is what I'm feeling. It doesn't feel home when you're not there. Pile number one. And since the deer is quite alert to their environment, they constantly need to be alert because uh, they want to make sure that they're not hunted down. I see with this alertness, in conjunction with the white how light, that this person is quite aware of what they have done. I feel here in your reading that they want to come out clean with the sun card here they want to come communicate um their clean intentions they want to be honest with you they want to be clear and they want to take things or they'll say they want to take things very slowly with you and they perhaps will because we see a lot of clarity and honesty here in uh, in this person's reading despite the fact that they really want to rush back and they want to get things going very quickly but they will be taking things slowly with you perhaps um, they'll be asking you to give this connection a chance for you to reconcile and to go back slowly to see that they truly have good intentions and that they do not want to hurt you or to cause any pain or suffering to you. Um, that they that all they care about is having you in their lives because you mean so much to them. Uh, pile number one. That is so sweet. I feel like you left them and it's really, it's like you, to them, you left home and home doesn't feel home anymore. Let's take um, your cards and get more information about what this person wants to say. All right, so what does pile number one's person want to say, please? What else do they want to say? What? Do they want to say to pile number one, please? So one, two, three, and four. And I see five as well, so I'm going to take five. We have the nine of swords. Oh, that's so sweet. You have... The Four of Cups, my goodness, that's so sweet. 
you have the king of pentacles mm. the hermit and the fool it's very clear their message is very clear here I see them saying that, as you can see, uh, there's, there may be perhaps a lot of crying involved in you not being around. They're not doing okay without you, is the message that I'm seeing here. And with the Four of Cups in conjunction to the Pentacles, I'm seeing a strong message of they really don't want anyone else, whether whether if you're a friend then no other friend understands them or uh, feels the same way that you feel if uh, if you are a parent or they are a parent again no other connection is the same the the way your connection is with this person uh, nothing is filling them up nothing and I feel like they're constantly looking for you. Uh, going back to this homey feeling that we've noticed. Do you see how the King of Pentacles here is sitting in their living room next to their cozy dog, which is a symbol of loyalty? In conjunction to the Hermit, I feel like it's the same seat. What, 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 what once felt so homey feels so empty. I'm seeing this person telling you, I feel alone without you. Even if I have everything that I love around me, if I have a lot of people, if I have a lot of stability, it feels like nothing uh, without you, pile number one. And I see them pleading for a new beginning with you, to give them another chance to show their real intentions and to be clear with you because the minute you cut them off uh, the minute they felt very dead on the inside oh it's such a sad sad message uh, pile number one obviously you mean so much to this person whether you want to go back or not this is definitely your decision we're only taking a look at who wants to reach out and what they want to say at the end of the day the decision is yours and if you feel like it's not right then follow your gut feeling i'm only here conveying what this person is feeling like um and what they want to say to you pile number one I see the energy of this person at the moment really convincing themselves of pushing themselves to summon up their courage and to contact you or to reach out and to talk to you. You see, this chariot, despite the fact that their intention is to move quickly, which is the energy of the chariot, <clears throat> you see that <clears throat> They're wearing an armor fully covered. And it's like they're afraid of your reaction. They're afraid to realize that you would not take them back and what that would mean and how this would break their heart. And so I see a lot of talk within them to just go and do it, even though they're afraid. They... And that's why they want to be very clear with you. They keep thinking that uh, you, you're just going to push them out very easily. You're going to say no, no. And this is what they're very afraid of. And they're trying to think of ways just to show to you uh, that they really do have good intentions and that they're not here to sabotage the situation or to try to make use of you or um, 
try to come back with their perhaps old behavior. I feel like they are quite aware of what they have done and that they want to communicate it with you without you cutting them off again and not giving them the chance to hear them. And so thoughts are brimming up within this person's head. They're thinking of the different options that they have and what they can tell you and how to present it to you without you um, warding it off away, not being interested. But at the end of the day, all they can think about is how they can move forward and speak to you about this connection, how you would listen to them and how they would explain to you what you mean to them, how they're feeling without you and how much they want to be clear and honest with you. Um, pile number one. So pile number one, that was your reading. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope it resonated with you. And if you've enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. Don't forget to click on your notification bell. And please don't forget to check out my productivity book. It's small, straight to the point, and so you won't procrastinate on reading it. But it has all the key advice and secrets to becoming a productive person right away all while enjoying the process. So if you're interested in that, you'll find a link to this ebook down in the description box. And pile number one, it was a pleasure doing this reading for you. I wish you all the best of luck and I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye. Hi, pile number two. So you have chosen the garnet as well as the earthworm. Okay, let's take a look at your cards and see who wants to reach out and what would they like to say to you. All right, let's check your oracle cards first. You have child nature. So friendships with animals, Communication with nature spirits. Oh, wow. This is going to be an interesting reading here. All right. Wow. You have the third house with early learning, childhood relations, the rational mind and communication. I think I'm getting... A strong inkling about this reading. You have the holy stone with protection. Yes, 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 yes. I'm definitely uh, seeing what this is about. You have the nine of pentacles. And it was 28, 28 the time of this reading as we saw that. Wow. You have the lovers. Whoa. <laughs> you have the ace of cups. My goodness, such so much love in this reading. You have the king of cups. And you have the eight of cups okay pile number two this might sound uh unexpected or perhaps you're expecting it but what i'm seeing in this reading is that the person that wants to reach out to you is someone who has passed on to the other side with the earth war, war, uh, warm here is the underworld someone who went to the other side and at the moment they are one of your spiritual guides this person has so much love for you it's unbelievable unbelievable you have the lovers the ace of cups and the king of cups 
There's so much to say here. But first and foremost, oh, this could also be, by the way, a pet that went to the other side. So it's someone that meant so much to you uh, or a pet that meant so much to you. But this person at the end of the day is communicating here, it seems, from the other side. And I feel like this person with the Nine of Pentacles is saying that you are the dearest person to my heart. <laughs> you are the dearest person to my heart. And that even though we are on at the same time, on in, on different planes, but I will always protect you and I will always be looking out for you. Pile number two. My love for you is strong and I will always keep you dear. I will never abandon you. <laughs> I'm also hearing, remember what I told you. I, I don't know what that is, but I'm hearing it very strong. Keep it close. Remember what I told you. I see here that they want to tell you that it is quite painful being separated from you when they left. In fact, I'm seeing here when they left, the most person they were thinking about was you. <laughs> They're telling you not to worry. They never keep their eyes off of you. And they are there on the other side, protecting you, looking out for you, and making sure that you are okay. And they send you a lot of signs here and there to show you that you, that you mean so much to them. It's like a wink. <laughs> and even though you may not see them, but they are confident that you feel them around. Pile number two. This is such a dear message here. They will be protecting you forever, looking out for you. You can see that here. They're your guardian, looking out for you on the other side. I see with childhood relations the idea that they've had a relationship with you for a very long time, perhaps even when you were a child, but not necessarily. It could simply mean the same message of the Six of Cups. Uh, this person had a, a, a long-term relationship with you and they've enjoyed growing up with you, being around you, being with you. They cherish the memories that you've had together so much and they keep it so close to their hearts. They have not forgotten <laughs> is the message. I feel so much powerful love from this pile. It's personally affecting me. I feel their love. It's like I'm channeling deep love in this pile. I feel the message of I hold you close. I hold you dear to me. And I will always be taking care of you. And again, you may not see me, but I don't leave you alone. I'm always by your side, making sure that you are okay. Even when times are tough, even when you feel like you're uh, left alone or abandoned, I'm there for you, even though you cannot see me. Uh, pile number two. Wow. Do you see how the energy is depicted here? I hold you dear. This is such a sweet pile. I'm going to pick out your tarot decks, your tarot deck, and I'm going to get more information here about what this person wants to deliver to you. Pile number two. 
So may we kindly get more information about what pile number two's person wants to deliver to them, please? What does pile number two's person want to deliver to them? So you have one, two, three, and four, and I see five, okay? So you have the Knight of Wands. You have the Empress. Okay. You have the Lovers again. Wow. Deep love here. Deep love. Oh, these are two. You have the Eight of Pentacles. And you have the Five of Cups. Do we have space to put them there? Yeah, let's put them on the side here. The Five of Cups and you have the Four of Swords. Yes. So I see this person telling you that you may feel that you are on your own sometimes. You may not see me, but I'm always there, even if you cannot see me. And so with the times that you feel alone, realize that you're never alone. If you feel like no one understands you, no one is looking out for you, no one is truly there with their hearts with you, that you are uh, left alone, they're saying you are not alone. You're never alone. Know that I, I'm, I'm listening. I can feel you. I know how you feel. I can hear you and I always feel for you. And do you see how these claws, these claws are in the nest? It's like they hug you, they try to take care of you, even though you cannot really see it. But they are really there for you, trying their best to make sure that you are protected and safe and loved, pile number two. And this is why they wanted to come in today's reading to deliver a strong message of love a strong message of passion uh, with the empress appearing here and then with this character with child and nature perhaps for some of you this could be a parent or a child or someone that you took very good care of, perhaps like we mentioned from the beginning, a pet. But there is a strong bond, a very strong bond between the two of you, or perhaps a grandparent as well. There's a strong bond between the both of you. Also, with the Eight of Pentacles that landed here, this is tying in beautifully with the Nine of Pentacles. There is a strong message here as well. I see this person saying that they want you to continue working on finishing something, working on your projects, uh, finishing your studies, uh, working on your plan and they are there making sure to support you and to help f uh, help you with opportunities help keep you independent happy well off doing well on your own not needing anyone they they don't want you to 
be independent on dependent on anyone they don't want you to um suffer they want you to live a happy life and they want to help you with your mission or they want to help you with what you're working on either your studies or your mission they want to help you out with that and they want you to continue to focus and shed your light on whatever it is you're touching bringing a part a piece of you an important piece of you and what you're doing because by time what you're working on or what you're studying will will grow uh, if it studies then you'll get your certificate and you'll be doing something they'll be helping you to do a lot of things with your certificate and that's why they want you to put your light into it they want you to do something important something that will make you and them proud and if it's a project or if it's your work, they want you to put your heart into it, into exactly what you have in mind because they are helping bringing important opportunities to you. They want you to achieve this dream or to achieve something that you, they can see you have in mind because they know you'll be proud and they will be proud of you for doing something like that is the message that I'm seeing here for you, uh, pile number two. So that was one of the important things they wanted to talk to you about as well as the fact that they are there even though you do not see them, they're guiding you. They're an important part of your spiritual team. They, they never cease to be around or take care of you. And they just want you to know that they will never stop, stop loving you. In fact, you are the most person that they love. Pile number two. My heart is filled with love doing this reading for you. And I'm happy they were able to bring this message across. So pile number two, that was your reading. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. Don't forget to click on your notification bell. And also, pile number two, don't forget to check out my productivity book if you'd like. Perhaps it will help you in your mission here. It is small, straight to the point, and so you won't procrastinate on reading it. But it has all the key advice and secrets to becoming a productive person right away, all while enjoying the process. And so if you're interested in that, you'll find a link to this ebook down in the description box. And pile number two, it was a real pleasure and a real honor for me to be able to do this reading, this very special reading for you. I cherish it. Thank you for tuning in. And thank you. Th a th a thanks, a big thanks to your spirit guides for allowing me to relay these messages. I cherish it. And pile number two, I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye. Hi, pile number four, and it's really interesting how your pile is starting at 4404 and you are... Oh, no, 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 your pile number three, I apologize, <laughs> but it's still super interesting, uh, the timing of this reading. 444, four, four. Um, four is a number of stability, and obviously it's part of your reading. All right, so you've chosen the Amazonite as well as the Scorpion. And let's take a look at who wants to reach out to you, pile number three, and what would they like to say? Okay, so you have child, magical. Seeing the potential for sacred beauty 
in all things. The belief that everything is possible. Wow, love this energy. All right. The Scorpio, the Scorpion uh, apologies is also fiery and fun. Okay. Let's continue. You have Uranus with a radical change. All right. So Uranus is the planet for Aquarius. Perhaps the person that wants to reach out is Aquarius or maybe a Scorpio or maybe not. I, it just caught my attention. Okay, you have broomstick with cleansing. Okay. All right. Mm. So, wow, you have the Ten of Cups. All right, beginning your reading. And it's right next to this childlike mag magical energy. You have... The two of swords. Okay. You have the four of cups. You have the tower. Mm, okay, now it's becoming clear. You have the hanged man and you have the queen of swords a lot of your cards are quite similar to another pile in this reading but uh there are slight differences but i do see a lot of similar cards and they came from different decks so I'm seeing here that the person who wants to reach out to you is um, currently in isolation because the scorpion tends to isolate also, you have the Amazonite, which is filtration. I see that you have definitely filtered this person out of your life. Everything in your reading confirms it. You have the broomstick and the broomstick. Um, in Wicca, it's used to cleanse out psychic debris. So it's like you felt this was bad energy and you took this person out of your life. Maybe with the scorpion, they've done something that really st stung you. It really stung. But I feel like they've hurt themselves as well. It, th there are two swords with the two of swords. With two people. So what they've done has hurt you and it has hurt them as well. And this is explained by the tower card. They've done something that hurt you, obviously. And with the tower card, it's in the Rider Waite Smith, and it's depicted the same he way here, by the way, as well. In the Rider Waite Smith, we always see one character that chose to um, jump out because they see the tower is collapsing. And so they're the their thoughts are the right thing to do is to save themselves and not just wait until it collapses down on them. And then another person that is holding so strong is not accepting the fact that the tower is falling. And so the tower itself pushes this person out. And what I'm seeing here is that one of you, and it seems it's you, chose to cut this person out. They've done something that stung and hurt. And they've turned something very beautiful into something that is hurtful, that is um, negative, they, that 
they've turned such positive energy into really pessimistic negative energy um whereas in the past when you thought about them you were filled with so much beautiful feelings with so much optimism with so much um where your heart was filled with so much love but they've stung you you've seen something and it turned all this beautiful energy into pessimism you don't want to think about them anymore it stings when you remember them you you've turned all these beautiful memories into bad memories because now you you see it from a different perspective you see it in a, such an ugly way because now maybe you kind of learned more about the situation and so with uranus here there's a radical change in what it was like and how it is now and so there was a swift cut you cut them off you'd be surprised if you watch pile number one there's some similarities here maybe you'll get more information and if you're coming from pile number one you you've done the right thing your intuition picked the right piles <laughs> and so you've quickly cut them off they did not obviously want to let go and the situation radically changed and shifted in a couple of seconds <sighs> now with the four of cups i see two messages that you are avoiding them and they are avoiding everything else they just want to go back so their message to you pile number three with the ten of cups that you are the most thing that has ever made them happy. In fact, with the child magical here, I feel like while they're with you, they experience life in such a positive manner. You make everything in life feel so beautiful. You fill life with so much beautiful. They feel so much alive when you are there. With the broomstick, they went from the sun energy, from feeling like everything in life is so positive, is so beautiful, is so much fun, that life is filled with so much hope to the moon or the darkness here, where they feel gloomy. They feel like they're alone. They feel like everything went suddenly dark on them. There's a shift going from day to night a radical change indeed they feel like uh, their happiness is not is no longer there and what is left is the deep memories that they carry in their hearts about how you used to be together And with the Two of Swords, I feel like they're saying they're making a big decision at the moment to reach out. Uh, despite the fact that they know you would be cutting them off. It's like you're so on guard uh, and you're not going to let them in. You're keeping yourself guarded. There are mountains behind you showing that it's not a straight plane. They'll have to climb so high and you never know. They might fall off again. It's not guaranteed. I see you are definitely standing there strong saying, don't even try. <laughs> it's not going to happen. And it breaks their heart knowing that it's so hard to contact you to reach out but they're living this tower moment they're they're living in so much anxiety so much destruction in their life from a very good place with the ten of cups from so much happiness you do see the dichotomy in energy from the light attributes to the shadowy attributes with pessimism, depression, disbelief in miracles. 
uh, yeah, there's just such different energy from the energy that we've seen initially from the card. Showing how their lives have, have changed dramatically with you not being there. And they just don't know what to do anymore. There's confusion here. They're trying to take the decision to get in touch with you. But they're afraid that you'd knock them over again. Especially that you're so adamant about your decision. Uh, pile number three. And the Queen of Swords is wearing the same colors in this deck as your Amazonite, which is all about filtering your environment. So you're very stern. You know what you want. You know what you're not going to accept. And you're standing there saying, no, you're filtered out and you're not coming back in. So I'm going to take out your tarot cards and I will try to get more information for you with regards to what this person that we're having this reading about wants to tell you. Pile number three. So what does pile number three's person in this um, reading want to tell them, please? One, two, three, four. Okay. So you have, wow, the sun, you definitely might want to check pile number one, by the way. You have the sun, you have the hermit, yeah, I really, <laughs> really, really mean it. These are the same cards. You have the knight of cups. Mm. And you have the Five of Swords. You do see in this specific Five of Swords a lot of regret. Someone has uh, done something because at the time they were looking out for themselves. They hurt another person. They stung you and them as we saw and they deeply regret it now. They just cannot, they're in disbelief. They cannot believe they've done uh, something like that to you and to them and to this beautiful connection. I don't, of course, know what it is it's that is not appearing in your reading, but they there's a lot of regret and they want to reach out and say how much they re they regret, obviously, what they've done. They see now that this has ruined everything. It wasn't the right thing. They, with the Knight of Cups and this in this deck specifically, you see uh, someone who wants to send a message to reconcile with you, to say sorry, to uh, show up with respect. You see this person has taken down their hats and put, it, and put it on their feet. They're ready to move if you would let them in. And they're ready to fully apologize and come clean with the sun, with the sun card to show clarity of their intentions, to show honesty, to show that they really have good intentions about their reconciliation with you. Also, the sun card with the hermit, it really shows that this person wants to say that life was everything when you were there. And without you, I'm alone. Life means nothing. And the only positive thing about my life now is the idea and the memories of you. That's the only thing that lights my life at the moment. The only thing that lights my life at the moment is the memories of you and the idea that it could be possible to go back again. I'm sorry Give me one more chance and I will show you how I will cherish it and how my life means everything when you are there. This is the message that I'm seeing from this person. But of course, pile number three, remember that this is a reading about their energy. What you want to do is completely up to you. Uh, 
this is in no way is inviting you to take something in that you do not accept. Or it could be a way for you to see um, their intentions on the other side. That's the energy that I'm picking up from the reading. And perhaps when this person does reach out and you speak to them, you'll be able to see if this makes sense if their intentions in the first place make sense, um, is it something that they are offering in the beginning and may go away by time? Or is this seriously someone who has learned a lesson, understood what they've done, and that they never want to go back to this energy again? And this is what I'm seeing in your reading, pile number three. I hope you've enjoyed this reading. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. Don't forget to click on your notification bell and please don't forget to check out my productivity book. It's small, straight to the point and so you won't procrastinate on reading it. But as I always say, it has key advice and secrets to becoming a productive person right away all while enjoying this process. And so if you're interested in that, you'll find a link to this ebook down in the description box. And pile number three, it was such a pleasure connecting with you and doing this reading for you. Thank you for allowing me to do this reading for you. And I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye.